Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Two Dudes Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Kevin. What's good, Kev? Man, nothing much. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday in the Midwest where the weather is batshit crazy. That's about it. So true. Speaking of batshit crazy, try working at a school. The kids yeah, have I already like, checked out. Yeah, I like my life too much. <laughs> so, um, I know they get out uh, after this week. Do y'all get off early off the job? Fuck no. Nah. Um, I got Thursday and Friday of next week off. I've been trying to get off or get off early any day I can this month. I keep getting denied. That's why I hate working in a call center because they don't adjust to hiring people. Like, if you got a crew of 50 and you allow a certain amount of hours each day that could be used vacation-wise, that's for those 50 people. When you hire another 30 to 40 people, you need to expand that versus leaving it how it is. So here I come starting the last week in April, and you did the the typical call center tactic with people probably first of the year. uh, These spots fill up fast. If you know you want them off, You need to request it now so you ain't got to worry about it later. So you got motherfuckers in January and February requesting time off in December and November. Not knowing they even going to have the time, but they put in that request. Mm. And then as you hire people, like you've had at least three other training classes since mine. You ain't once increased the bandwidth of vacation time. So here I go to put in to try to get off three or four hours early. Motherfucker hits me with, we only got four minutes of vacation available. Yeah, because I want to leave four minutes fucking early. Yeah. I, I was going to ask you if you said four minutes, because I that, that don't four even minutes. sound right. It's that stupid, four minutes. That's how, like, this shit just makes no fucking sense. But, you know, that's that's that cause in the world that I'm, I'm in right now. You know, I'm thankful to have a job. I'll just be glad when I get away from it because I'm too damn old for this kid shit. Well, in my book, you still winning because you're off Thursday. Uh, we have Friday off, period. Really? Yeah. What time, when did the kids leave from school? Oh, this Friday. But we got to work all next week. Oh, wow. It ain't no big thing. You know, I'm just going to coast. You know what surprised me, though? is a lot of the school districts here, like Lee Summit, some up north, they're making the kids go to the 22nd. Really? Yeah. It ain't never been like that when we was in school. I think some of these schools are so prideful and want to show that the pandemic hasn't beat them. Like, these are the same districts that didn't give the kids the whole week off of Thanksgiving like a lot of other districts did. It's almost yeah. like it's a badge of honor. Like, look at me. When, what are you really doing? My friend was like, well, they're going to be taking finals. Yeah, I doubt that because the semester goes clear into January. So that's bullshit right there. They just, if I was a teacher, I'd be pissed. All my other teacher friends are out on come half day Friday. Here I am, got another two and a half fucking days to work. I'd be pissed. Yeah, I agree. That's I mean, stuff. realistically, what are you really going to be doing the 20, 20th, 21st, and 22nd? What are you really going to be doing to where you got to be there? Nothing. And then a lot of parents be like, fuck it, we going on vacation. They done pulled their kid. So it's like, you go hold it against Jimmy because his parents wanted to go to Colorado or something. He can't say, no, he only 12. He got to go where his parents go. So I know this is the this school shit just gets dumber by the year, I swear. I'm glad that my kids are at high school and about to be high school because I'm that much closer to being away from it. Boy, I don't, I, I, I'm not mad at you. I wish I was there I, with I'm you. I'm sorry, I forgot you. You still got a long way to go. Yeah, I got uh, one on the cusp and then the other is just, just getting started almost. Yeah, well, Darren's at what, second? Second what? Ain't in second grade? Or oh, hell grade? no. He sixth grade. Is he? Yeah. Damn, my bad, Darren. I still had your punk ass in middle, in uh, elementary. 
Damn, nah, get out of Yeah, because you know Charles is getting ready to graduate. Damn, you an old motherfucker. I just want you to know that. I am. I really am. This gray, all, this I, gray I, I, is I, earned. Man, it's just like, for some reason, I just kept daring in elementary. I just, damn. No, nah, don't do me like that, bro. <laughs> so you ain't got, you only two years behind me, then, because Kaylee eighth grade, so. Yeah, at the, at, the, at the halfway point, right. right. I had your motherfucking ass like Gary was in third grade. <laughs> Them days is over. My bad. Damn, you trying to put him back in preschool and stuff. You know, after school shit. <laughs> oh, my bad. My motherfucking bad. So, um, you got all your Christmas shopping done? I guess. I don't know shit, you know. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> well, you know, here... Well, what's the best way to put this? When you're in a cohabitational world of you get this, I get that, you're never done until the other counterpart does their part. Because you never know when you got to be the bounty pick, quicker picker upper and uh, pick up the slack on some bullshit. So I'll say my part of the list is A1. The other part of the list is like uh, project windows with them blinds. It's some broken pieces waiting to see if they get filled. Mm. Wow. Uh, I, I I am done. But you know, it it it, it went down to today. Cause daddy's slow sometimes. You know, yeah. had to had to you know take care of some other stuff. But uh, yeah. finally done, got it taken care of. So now all I got to do is uh, sit back, relax, and. Uh, let them unwrap and enjoy. So what was, uh, what's the big ticket item that, uh, Charles or Darian wanted? Oh, uh, was there one? Charles, right? I, no, the, I didn't go, I didn't go big ticket this year. I really didn't. You, you both. Know, for the little one, you know, more is better. So you can get a lot of low dollar stuff. And just the joy of having 20 presents instead of one big one, they enjoy that because they got 20 things. I guess that's where I'm different as a kid. I only want like two or three, five things at the most. Now, you wanted a Lamborghini. Hey, if I get a remote control right now, I would. It was decent. I just, I don't know. I just, I never, I didn't trip off a bunch of stuff. It was always like, I was always particular about what I wanted. Cause I really didn't trip off nothing. But you know what? I was like that too. But you know, I, I, I've always been in the mindset. You know, it doesn't matter what you get me because if if I really want something, I know how to get it myself. And so see, I, I appreciate anything anybody does for me. That's the mindset we have to stop having. That's a deadly mindset to have. Why is that deadly? Because you don't allow other people the chance to shower you with love and appreciation. Cause I was telling my trainer this, cause she was saying how she can get whatever she wants, is that in the third? And I told her, I said, whoa, 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 back up, back up, back up. You said your trainer and then you said she. All yeah. this time I thought your trainer was a dude. No, I'm not sexist like you, no. No, no, I'm I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on there, bro. No, it's a, it's a, are y'all are y'all really working out? Are y'all working out? Yes, bro, she's married. She's a friend of the family. That, that now, didn't answer my question. Yes, I, I'm working out. Trust me. <laughs> but um, I'll say this. If I had met her after her first divorce, that might be a different story. When I first met her, I dropped the ball. But at the same time, I wasn't in the right mindset because I was wilding. And my, my good friend is married to her cousin. We all went to college together. But she's from uh, St. Louis. And when she came in town, I met her for the homie's graduation from Mo West. She was cute, had a nice, good thing going. But I know me, I was still wild. I didn't want to jeopardize my relationship with her cousin. But because I fuck around, had something going with her. And then I'm getting together with them. So I go to the movies or bowling or something. I fuck around, bring another chick with me. Like I ain't talking to her cousin. So I, was, so I had to, you know, let it. Let it fly by because I wasn't in that mental mindset. I was still out there wild and just, you know, 
doing me. You know what I'm saying? So then I think we linked up again, but she was about to get married that time or whatever. I didn't know they got a divorce. And I was like, dang. But, you know, things happen for a reason. Some things ain't supposed to transpire. Now, you know, we like fam in some regards, and she is a fitness workout guru that gets on my damn nerves, but she getting me going in the right direction. I appreciate her for it. But at the same time, when she got divorced, she told me she had a five-year-old, three-year-old, and a two-month-old. And she was like, her so husband, basically, she had the whole starting backcourt. Yeah, you can say that. But the thing is, she got her independence by it's on me because father only comes around when it's a sporting event for the children. He was never like, you know, that that sorcerer that if it's sports related, he got it. anything after that. It's just picking his kids up and giving them a roof and food till it's mm-hmm. time to go back. So that being said, she became this independent. She's like, I'm showing my own uh, driveway, taking trash out. She's like, so when I got remarried, I'm doing all this. And she was like, he was mad. I was like, do you even need me around? And that's when I told her. I was like, y'all got to stop doing that because we have to feel that we serve a purpose. I said, if we don't feel like that, then we start getting resentment and feel some kind of way. I was say, in my marriage, toward the end, I was feeling like the definition of extra because everything would be done. I said, hey, we're going to do it on this day. Because mind you, you know, I'm working day job, part-time job, and DJing. So if I can't get to it on Wednesday and I tell you I'm going to get it Friday, let me get it Friday. Don't let me come in Wednesday or Thursday and you done did it. And I get, oh, right. I'm just, I, I was just sitting here doing nothing. So I figured I would do it. That shrinks and minimalizes me. And so I'll tell her, I said, because she was like, she knows to get her husband. So I gave her ideas. And then I was like, well, what you tell him to get you? Well, I got everything. I'm getting myself. I said, that's the problem. He mm-hmm. has to feel that he is a part of your world. And you have to let other people. Well, we did this gift exchange with some other people. And I don't know what to tell him. I said, again, you have to open up and be vulnerable and let people shower you with love and appreciation and what they want to get for you. And instead of being like, well, I'll just give her money because she can get it herself. Or I'll put in on I said, that doesn't help. That's why I say that to you. We have to, we got to start being more vulnerable and stop being so, you know, the Berlin Wall to where it's going to take David Hassel for the mother to come down. We got to stop being like that. That probably bro, ego, male and female wise, is a deadly thing. Bro, I, I am vulnerable right now. I, I got to go out to the liquor store and pick up a, a bottle of Hennessy Black for Tony. That's because you like a dumbass team. That's a whole different story. Don't front like your team just been all that for the last 50 years. As a matter of fact, it's been 50 years between bowls for y'all. So they're gonna gonna hurt pride again. I'm just saying, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have bet for them six years ago. I'd been like, "Ah, I'm good. I know when and when not to. Now I'll roll the dice like a motherfucker. Uh, what is this 2021, 2015? I'd have been like, So what's the odds? Who playing? Give me to 1158, and I'll think about it. Bet now I do the shit two three weeks in advance. Well, I learned my lesson. I'm, I'm not I'm not making or taking any more bets. Uh, probably for the next ten years or so. I just I should hope not. The season uh, that hurt me, bro. The season that really hurt me. It started yeah, off with yeah. such promise. I, I knew from the moment that uh, the Washington email scandal started, it was over. Yeah, because right now your winning percentage on bets. Is about as good as Jose can say goes batting average without Roy's. Damn. Yeah. So you're saying I got to juice up in order to get right. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, since we're talking about my squad, I want to have a moment of silence for pretty much every starter on the team because half of them are going to be gone next year. And the way they was talking today, they talking about Carr about to be gone. They was like, he, he might be in that half. Course. He might be in they that half. Why keep him? They're like, it's a new coach. Don't want him. But they even said Mayock about to be gone. I was that, like, yeah, that's damn. that's possible. Um, Mayock had a couple years to uh, get us pointed in the right direction. We start off with five or six wins every year, and then tank. And, and I told you why. If you Mayock look at the way they play, 
Mayor's yeah. been in the three years now? Uh, two years. Gruden was there for three. Okay. See, I mean, the, and you go sound crazy for this. It's kind of like the Knicks thing. When the Knicks didn't get Patrick Ewing that head coaching job and how they ceremoniously traded him away, then let him retire, Nick, they ain't been the same since. When y'all cut Jerry and then let Rod Woodson go when he was y'all's secondary coach, y'all ain't been the same since. It's like some players are so embedded into the team, you should let them go when they want to. When Jerry came to Oakland, it was like San Francisco 2.0. He was balling. And then all of a sudden it was like, then he became a journeyman, Jerry Rice. So it's just like. That's right, because he went to Seattle and Denver. Yeah. And so it's like it's so many black marks, ironically, that don't help. I think every team has an aura. Like, for us, that all that Belcher shit, when them niggas was wild on the plaza that people don't know about, we couldn't get over the hump. Once all that got washed away and cleaned out, team looked different. You know, new regime. You know, once we got rid of Carl Peterson, team looked different. Even on Pioli, we was better than Peterson, but Pioli was just a dumbass that that was that whole college connection bullshit that gave him a job. What's the same with Peterson? But it's just like... I think now, I'm going to say this. With Peterson and back in the Marty Schottenheimer days, it was that 12 yards in a cloud of dust, run heavy. You didn't have any good receivers, even when you had a good quarterback. Uh, so he got y'all close to the mountain, but not all the way to the top. The thing is, Peterson gave us a good coach. And Marty, after that, it was just all about... As my uncle, my uncle sees the ticket over, then he was like, Peterson's mindset was, asses in seats till we go into the playoffs, sell these tickets. Exactly. I can tell you, if you look during Peterson's regime, them tickets are probably average 90% or higher every season. Yeah, and, and, and I agree with you on that because that's the same thing that Mark Davis is doing. It's like, hey, we're in Vegas. We got Vegas money. And by the way, tickets to a Raiders game are sky high. I, I think that's all he's looking at is his bottom line. Hey, we'll that's why I said that. to you, if and I'm speaking for other fans too because I'm in a couple Facebook forums and everything, we're not going to continue to support the same old product because the same product is giving us the same result. And what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing but expecting a different result. Yeah, y'all just y'all better wife getting beat over and over. That's probably a horrible analogy, but that's what it is. Damn. Yeah. Y'all Tina and he's Ike. Bro, what's love got to do with it? That's what you need to ask yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good setup. That was really good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a limo scene at this rate for y'all. Eat the cake, Derek. Eat the cake. <laughs> nah, he's saying fans eat this cake. Yeah, yeah that's true. But um, it was like, but then it's like the I think it was the ESPN NFL Network. You know, I'm, I'm not the biggest Derek Carr fan or David Carr, whichever one decided to call him that day. They knocked him so little and was like, you probably won't get the shine or Russell, but if you can't get them, then you can look at the cars. And I was like, damn. I was like, cars numbers are solid, but at the same time, he got to eat that because of what's around him. So it's almost like in some regards, it might be best for him this offseason and be like, hey, see if you can get me out of here so I can go get a bigger payday and a fresh start. Because if I was somebody with the Raiders right now, I would be trying to go elsewhere. I, I look at it like this, and I, don't, I forget where I heard this on YouTube, but somebody said if you take the starting quarterback off of Washington and you put him on the Washington football team, they're already in the playoffs. I don't know about that. Although they do got a decent receiving core. I mean, they just lost their tight end for the season with ACL. He was a bum when I drafted him, but apparently he got better once I cut him. Ain't that ironic. Um, I think you put Carr in a consistent, decent system. He does do good, and the team has a good shot at the playoffs. The only player I think that's going to be with the Raiders for sure is Jacobs because he got 30 million kids to pay for. <laughs> uh, I, I don't even think that he he's safe. Darren Waller may be safe. That's the only one I'm I can think saying. of. 
Oh, Jay Max Crosby. Be, Max Crosby safe. Yeah, he's a good trade piece. Because nah. he'll rebuild through the draft. He's a good trade piece for picks. Now, if Carr says, hey, I'll sign for 19 mil, we'll keep him. That's a bargain basement price. Because we ain't paying 25, 30 mil for a quarterback. I think for Carr, what's going to end up happening, for him to resign, is going to be a two or a three year deal. I'm fine with the prove it deal. I'm fine with two years because if we get the right coach, the right system, and some defensive players, and I'll talk about the defense in a minute, then that'll give me what we need. But here's, a, here's a, what I mean by a two or three year deal he's going to get a Kirk Cousins type deal. Backloaded. No, it's not going to be backloaded. It's going to be a two or three year deal for like 60 million a year and give him about 20 mil a season. It's like it's gonna be cheaper overall compared to the other quarterbacks, but yeah. it's still gonna be a big, you know, pay to each season. So it's like you pay big and you're saving, but you're still gonna give them about 20 a season. So I think a three-year deal at about 60, 70, with about probably 85% of a guarantee, he stays. And see, that's the thing. I think that they would do a three-year for 60 mil, but I I think it would be 18 for the first year, 20 for the second year. And then 24 or 22, whatever the hell my math is, for that third year. And, and see, they, they would load it like that because they wouldn't be responsible or on the hook for that second or third year if he doesn't perform. But that's the thing, though. It's going to be what the guaranteed money is. Because the name of the game now is once that guaranteed. Because they always say, oh, there's no more guaranteed money. So he's just playing the play. So it's going to be about... Because it was it was it Peyton once had the guarantee that it was paid like the first two seasons, then the rest. So it just it's all about what that guaranteed money go be. Yeah. But it's it's safe to say though. I hope you're ready for a rebuilding. Because that's what y'all about to do in that pretty new stadium. You know what though? I don't really mind the rebuilding in the NFL because we're not gonna go over like the Lions. No matter what we do. Uh, you know, we, we got enough talent on the team to win a few games, so that's not a problem. That's where you got to stop. You'll know if that talent will be there next season. That's true. That's very true. Hey. But but it depends also on the coach. Uh, and you can speculate. If we were to get a Harbaugh, Carr's there. Harbaugh's not leaving Michigan. No, he I'm saying I'm saying if, if we got a Harbaugh. Harbaugh, because Harbaugh, he on his last year, they about to give him a stupid check. And if he's smart, he'll keep it. Oh, uh, he's going to take it because, you know, he was down there out the door if he didn't beat Ohio State this year, all the coach years up. If that didn't happen this season, Harbaugh was looking for a job. He might have been a target for all them fans. And now in another seven years, we'll be looking at him trying to beat Ohio State again. Exactly. What he did this season bought him about another three years in Michigan. Yeah. They'll give him a five- or six-year deal, but he got at least three years. I don't mind us getting a college coach. I really don't, as long as it's not Urban Meyer. Um, I don't want a retread coach. That's the thing, though. Right now, if you look at college, college is, really doesn't have much talent, whether it be coach or players right now. There's not really one coach who's like, okay, if they come, they'll do something. But, like, if you go to college, you really go get a, a halfway proven coach that really ain't did nothing because – a lot of them old coaches, retread coaches, they is they just border on that not doing nothing. Just like it's crazy the thing in basketball, Coach K has become an average coach with Duke. It's almost well, like he's bowing out too late. He should have went two years ago. The uh the the rumor mill has Dabo Sweeney coming from Clemson. See, I don't think he's that good. I don't either. I, I think I think it's a product of the recruitment that he's able to do. The recruitment and who he had a quarterback. Yeah, at the NFL level, I don't think he's going to be – he's not going to be as bad as Urban Meyer, but he's not going to be very much better. He's going to be a Pete Carroll retread. Well, Pete Carroll, remember, he was an NFL coach before he went to college. He went to college, won a few national championships, came in and took over Seattle and won an NFL title. So I but can't knock Pete. When he was in New England, he was trash. Well, that's true, but think yeah, about it. When, that when, when Belichick was in Cleveland, he was trash. True, but he stayed in the NFL to make himself better. And he learned from Parcells. They don't give Parcells enough credit 
for what Belichick doing. Belichick just came over that shit. He but you know what? And enhanced it. Some coaches need to get away to get better. Uh, Pete Carroll is a good example of that. And um, who was uh, the Chiefs coach a few years after um, Pioli took over? Uh, he was the Rams coach. He had left football, came back, won a title with the Rams. Oh, Dick Vermeil. Yeah, Dick Vermeil. That's a good example of a coach that stepped away, uh, checked his priorities, and came back. And those no, are the I coaches. Get what, I, I get what you're saying, but you're missing what I'm saying. If Sweeney comes, y'all, he's not going to be good. He's going to have to leave and come back is what I'm saying. Like, he could, that, when he came, you might be right. He was below 500 the whole time. So he had to go back to college, get his game up, get that price up. Then he came to Seattle and he, was able, he knew what he was doing. Sweeney yeah. coming to y'all? Because what have you really heard about Clemson this season since old boy went to the NFL? Nothing. Nothing. What did you I hear agree. about him before Lawrence came there after Deshaun Watson left? Nothing. So it's just yeah. um I, I'd be happier with a uh assistant coach from another team, you know, the enemy obviously would be a good fit. He Don't think that's gonna happen. I told you quit saying that he ain't going nowhere. I'm sorry. Are you afraid that if I speak it it will happen? No, nah, I the enemy the enemy does say the Titans go take a team in the division. I can see him going elsewhere, but not in the division. Byron, I keep saying Byron. Byron Leftwich would be a good fit, but Hell, Byron would probably want his own QB. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, though, Leftwich has worked with a decent amount of QBs. He had old boy in Arizona that's there now. He had the QB before him, which I forgot who it was, uh, but he wasn't bad. Then he had he's had Brady, he's had Winston. So he's worked with a myriad of different Q quarterbacks. So he's ready. I don't think he's a quarterback he can't work with. And, you know, he's been a bunch of old boy in, um, in Tampa supposed to be an offensive-minded guru. So he's well-versed and he's ready. It's just will he get a chance is the question. Yeah, it would be a shame if – and I know you don't want him to go. It would be a shame if Leftwich or enemy don't get some offers this offseason. I think enemy will – I think Leverage will, too. I think the league is going to put pressure because a gift and a curse. For Grambling, it's a gift. I know they're probably paying him a nice penny. You see your old coach. Hugh Jackson. Head coach. Yeah. So imagine how the league feels about that, how he shouldn't have been he, – he shouldn't have left Oakland. Hell, he shouldn't have left Cleveland. Or since and you know what? I blame Oakland's former GM. For Hugh Jackson leaving. Yeah, yeah he's the one that got rid of it. So Reggie a, McKenzie. Yeah, Reggie yeah, McKenzie yeah. did him dirty. That's what I'm saying. So it's it's another good coach that should have never left. So you know the you know the NFL has black marks against it because we don't have many black coaches. So I don't see them allowing Leftwich or the enemy to slip through the, the cracks like Jackson did. I mean, because people say it's fucked up. It's all the way down to, to the swag. That's about three steps above a junior college. So, but granted, he's going to give Grambling notoriety and stuff. Hopefully, he's going to change a lot of things. But I don't see them allowing the enemy or left which to go to college. They're going to do their best to make sure they stay in the NFL. Because the coach for Detroit should damn sure lose his job this offseason. Pretty and much. He don't want to take that job. But I would take that job just to get some NFL weight up, head coaching weight on me. Right now, besides Vegas, there should be coaching vacancies in Jacksonville, Detroit, and what other team was I thinking of? That Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. There's another team that I'm thinking of that I can't quite remember that should have a coaching change coming up here pretty soon. Okay. And it's not the Jets. They're bad, but he's in his first or second year, so uh, I, I give him a little bit more time. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It'll come to me. But, you know, closing out, you know, on the Raiders, awful loss at uh, Kansas City. These last four games, I don't see a win among them. They got Cleveland. They've got Denver. 
They've got Indianapolis, and they close it out with the Chargers. So what you're saying is you're about to owe me a bottle. That's all I heard. Yeah. Get in line. Tony's next. I'm trying to think. What do I want you to get for him? I have to think on that. So yeah, because in order to get to 10 wins. Y'all need to win out, don't you? You got to win out, yeah. Cleveland is possible because we beat them in their crib in the snow last year, but I doubt it because they're playing pretty good. Denver's possible because we've already handled them, but Indianapolis, that boy, they running back, he's cold. We can't stop the run, so there's that. And then we just, for whatever reason, the Chargers got our number this year. So So basically what you're saying is one more loss and you're done. Uh, for, as far as the playoffs, yeah. Yeah, because when you think of it, there's already three teams above us that are trying to get into the hunt. Indianapolis is one of them, so it may come down to that game. Um, but if you look at how many teams have six or seven losses that are still in it in the AFC, we got to count our blessings that, you know, we're still alive. Are you really alive or is it just for shits and giggles? If you plug us to a monitor, it's still beeping. We ain't flatlined yet. You know, it's, it's the saying, it looked good on paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks good on paper. But remember, the Seattle Seahawks made a run, and they were a 7-9 and nine team that went deep into the playoffs. Y'all ain't got to be careful, though. And we don't have Marshawn Lynch anymore, either. Yeah, I got Joe Campbell. Damn. All right, that, that, that's all I'm saying. More of the story is you don't stomp on the other team's logo unless you absolutely, without a doubt, know that you know that you know that you can beat them. And there's not a team in the NFL that you can say that about. You know what surprised me, though? Every ESPN, Fox Sports 1, um, the U2 sports show, they all have made a point to mention that, mention the guy who called him to the field, and meant how he need his ass whooped and how they need their ass whooped for doing something that they wasn't ready for. Listen, I commend Unique and Gakwe for thinking of it. I just mm -hmm. wish he would have thought of something else or said, hey, come to the bench with me real quick. Let's all get together right here on Out of Bounds. Now, hey, well, uh, a friend of mine, he was like, man, what did they get together? What was they talking about on there? I said, they was placing their barbecue order because they knew the game was over. <laughs> Just wrong. Absolutely wrong. Yeah. I, I'm going to say one more thing when it comes to the fans, though. So not, I'm, I'm no longer talking about my team because I'm just going to see how this plays out. It don't look good, like you said. We own life support. But some of these fans, you have to know what's up. I, I'm the diehardest of hard Raider fans. I love my team. I bleed silver and black. But when it's time to blow with this thing up, it's time to blow this thing up. Because even if we did, by some miracle, rip off four straight wins and get into the playoffs, we're not winning in the first or second round. Because the teams that I mentioned ain't good. The teams that we're going to face are. We either yeah. going to hit New England, Buffalo, Kansas City again, we don't want to see them in Arrowhead a third time with the playoffs. So, yeah, even if we got there, what are we going to do, you know? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things. Sorry, I'm going to draw. Um, people have to stop being novelists. They got to stop being on this. We win now. This ain't the NBA. It ain't about the, you bring one player in that changes everything. That, that It don't work like that in the NFL. You got to come to terms with you know, every team has a three to five year cycle. And Let me backtrack so real quick. Let me backtrack real quick because I do want to mention the team one more time because you said something that sparked me. And I've heard Derek Carr say this, and I've heard other couple of players on the Raiders squad say this after a loss. All season, they've said, well, it's a loss. We're going to forget about it and move on to the next game. That's not the way I would look at it. 
That is not the way to look. Dwell on that loss because it's going to make you better. Forgetting about it just makes you forget you lost. And then you go on to the game, the next game, with the same game plan. And then what happens? You get blasted again. Do I'll you not it. think that Cleveland has looked at the tape? Ooh, Kansas City did this to him. Let's do that too. Because Chell's about to have 400 yards on y'all. And if he don't, Hunt will. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a page from Honey Badger's press conference today. He was like, they asked him about, you know, the whole Stallman thing. He was like, that ain't how champions act. Point proven. Then he then he was like, well, did you get a chance to look at the film of this game? He was like, and this is where I think a lot of problems come with a lot of these teams. And you need to do more beyond the facility. He said after every game, usually Sunday night, I watch film of the game to see what I did wrong, what I did right, to get me ready for the week and ready for the for practice and for the next game. How many players do you think on your squad actually do that? They don't. They probably get on the bus or get in their car and head home. Because what did they say? We forget about it. We go to the next game. Yep. He's literally watching video, win or lose, of the game he just played to get him ready for Monday, getting ready for the next team. But let I, me ask you this. Before what? week five, when all the shit went down, Mm-hmm. Do you think Gruden would let them forget about it and go to the next game? I think he probably did. I think in some regards he probably did. I think certain players I, – I think Gruden's the type to where he wants his players to be player coaches, and he gets on them to get on them. Because, like, it's one thing I give Honey Badger the first time. He was like, we suck at the end of the season. So we wasn't communicating. We was missing assignments. We wasn't talking. He was like – each week we got better at it because we watching film or we doing this more. It was like, so we're a unit. And like when they talked to Miko Harmon or whatever, he was like, oh, my standards, what I should do, is, they're extremely high. He was like, I'm not living up to my expectations. He was like, but if we were losing, I, my eyes would be a little different. He said, but the, in that locker room, the aura that we had within each other, you don't want to rock that. You just get into your part and keep it going. He was like, yeah, I wish my homes would have threw that pass a little sooner. Probably could have got a touchdown. I hit the guy with a double move, he fell. He was like, I wasn't supposed to be down the field like that. He said, but when the guy fell, I took off on the street. So that right there is his damn problem. That lets me know he doesn't run his routes like he's supposed to. So it's like he told on himself, but yeah. he got the pass, he made up for, you know, breaking the route. But he said, he was like, you know, he said Tyreek's the, the guy. He said, I'm learning from Tyreek, learning from Travis. Learn from Sammy when he was here. He said, well, my time come, I'm going to be ready. I'm like, your time came, you ain't been ready because Josh Gordon started over. But, you know, in his mind, I think he's like, he'll be ready when Tyreek's not there or whatever. I'm like, when Tyreek's not here anymore, you might not be here still. But it's just like, he's still in line, you know, the, like, uh, what is it, drum line, one band, one sound. You know, that's how he was talking or whatever. And it's just, I don't think you guys have that nucleus of bets to make that happen. And I don't know if Gruden really had control like that. No, and Gruden wasn't really creative with his play calling because another thing that you just mentioned, uh, Josh Gordon, uh-huh. if you look at the play calling from Andy, it is very, very superior to the play calling from Vegas. A one-yard slant pass on the goal line. Who would have thought of that? By the way, props to Josh Gordon for that. That was sweet. And you can see they was working Josh into the offense that game. It's like yeah. he showed finally that physical dimes that he had because he's so damn big. He's still rusty. Because a couple of slant patterns to where he didn't hit that slant hard and quick enough to where when the ball came, he was reaching. So he still got some rust on him, but you definitely saw an improvement. But bro, a one yard slant pass. Nobody thinks of that. And what make it so bad, it was like robotic to where height throw. So he had to yeah. move fast for mm-hmm. it. Exactly. And, and that tells me that Andy has trust in his players. Mm-hmm. You can look at the, the creativity at the line. They do little spin moves at the line. Uh, what was the other touchdown pass? Mahomes just basically like a bowling ball. Yeah, he called Williams on the flat. Then he rolled out. Linebacker looked at Williams and kept going in. And Mahomes just like a – Lob over him, and Williams took it to the house. 
And that's the thing about the uh, Raiders and other teams. They're too busy acting instead of reacting. When, yeah, when, right. when a player does something, you got you to gotta respond. You can't just sit there and think about it. You can't expect to have help come over the top, especially that close to the goal line. It's like you are the help. You're the last line of defense. Yeah, when he jumped over, dude, I was like, that's hilarious. I'm like, you yeah. can't line tackle. You need to go for the chest instead of going for the legs. So, like, you know, you're scared to put a hit on them. Back to what I was saying about the fans, though. Um, you know, I was kind of upset with, uh, you, you know, you showed me the uh, the reaction that you, you're back and forth with a certain person on uh, Facebook. And, I, and, and, I thought the shit was funny. I need, I just put the the MJ emoji on the coach under his comment because I was just like I I'm not about to waste my time already because if you gotta bring up the Super Bowl anybody who knows football will say y'all had no offensive line and that defense had y'all for lunch right and stop with that and, and believe me I'm salty as hell but it is what it is we straight yeah. out got our asses whooped yeah and you know since he wanted to bring up the Super Bowl Tom Brady didn't beat us that defense did. Brady had like 190 yards. That defense did what it was supposed to do and got them to win. But and it's like one thing, that, you, granted you hate Nick Wright, but he made a good point. What Tampa did in the Super Bowl to us, winning by 13, everybody's like it was the greatest thing. We win by 13, oh, y'all just ain't trying hard enough. But that's the gift and the curse when you have that, when you had an explosive offense and now the defense is changing how they attack you, and you make the adjustment to beat them in another way. And see, I compare Kansas City to the uh, 95 San Francisco 49ers or the early 2000s uh, St. Louis Rams. Y'all yep. y'all beat people so bad that when you barely win a game, and I quote-unquote barely, that's 20 points or less, people think something's wrong yeah, because when- it's expected now. Yeah, when you go to the essence of football, it's grind out, smash mouth, low scoring games. But you know, NBA, baseball, basketball, they want everything, hockey, everything to be high scoring because people like scoring more than they like defense. So it's just like we gave them what they want, and now we just stepped away from the table, and they just like, we need more, we need more. But we over here like, eh, we'll give it to you when we can. We not go force it. And I give Mahomes credit. He has finally learned to do his check down. He has finally learned you ain't got to go deep every damn play. They finally realized, yeah, Tyreek's a jewel. Let's give him the seven-yard slant of this owl pattern and let him take it to the house versus sending him on the street like he Randy Moss all the damn time. Think about how much more deadly Randy would have been if he ran more routes than just a deep out or a slant pattern. Oh, he would have been cold. I mean, he already was cold, but uh, that's one of the reasons why the New England Patriots, the year that they went 19-0, and didn't finish the deal. Yeah, because if Randy would have did that, he probably would have broke Jerry's records before he even re- – way before he retired. Yeah. All right, I, I can't talk anymore, Raiders, because my heart is smashed. Yeah. You know, well, I'm going to pay for your first therapy session. I got you. All right. I appreciate it. I might open your bottle and drink some of it before I get <laughs> That's that bullshit right there. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, um, you got anything that uh, you want to talk about, get off your chest, or uh, comment on today? No, I got to, uh, you know, so I know we're probably about to wind down when we did more talking about the NBA than, ex- I mean, NFL than expected. Got a question for you, just some fun shit or whatever. Saw this on, um, saw this on uh, YouTube earlier on one of these podcasts I watched. So here's the question. Would you work for the mafia for a year or would you do a year in jail? And I'm not talking no little hold, no uh, detention center. I'm talking like Leavenworth. For what? What, what? What's the end game? No, just which one would you do? Would you just go to jail for a year, or would you work for the mafia for a year? Let which me, one you think you could do? 
I'm going to Tony Soprano. What you need me to do, Tony? Here's the thing about that. Do you really want to, if you go to the mafia, they go set you up. Not in a good way. So are you really going to get that year or are you going to be there longer than a year? That's true because when you work for the mob, if they need you to take the fall, you got to take the fall for something. You might end up doing more than a year. And now you're taking the fall when they need you to take somebody out. So they got you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And when you in debt, you in debt. Exactly. So again. So I guess I'm making, I'm making, I'm breaking rocks or making license plates, I guess. That's what they, so they were debating on that. And uh, this one chick was like, oh, I'm going to jail. And I'm getting out in 10 months for time for good behavior. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. So I, I think I would do the year in jail, too. I just have to fucking make a deal with it. Because at least I know with that, I'm not going to get no fights or nothing. I'm going to get out in my year. Maybe oh, that's what I was getting ready to say. It ain't going to be no good behavior. I'm getting out in a year. Because when I get in, I'm a little dude. I'm going to find the biggest, meanest looking dude. And I'm just going to knock. I'm going to lay everything I got into him. <laughs> you going to knock him out? They're going to have to separate us. They're going to put me in the hole for a few days. I'm going to end up having to do the whole year. But at least I know. Got I got my respect. Yeah. Okay. So here's the next one. Now, you, I know you're going to go old school with this. Next question on something like I've been watching a bunch of different podcasts. If you had the capability to be in any music video throughout your lifetime, which one would you go? Which one would you want to be in? Oh, damn. Wow. Oh, man. Um, am I a performer in this video or whatever you want to be in the video? That's because the one guy said he wanted to, he would be. And uh, uh, was it, uh, I think it was the Janet video when she was all on some dude. He was like, yeah, that's going to be me in the video. <laughs> As one comedian was like, he will want to be the stick man and remember the time. That way he would be in the scene with Michael, Mind, Magic, all them or whatever. So it's just, with, <laughs> what video would you want to be in? Damn, that's 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 a tough one, bro. Um, it's been so long since I've seen music videos. Thanks a lot, MTV, for changing that format. I mean, that's why I was like, the current shit don't matter. It's what the shit you grew up on. Because one guy said he would want to be in Billy Jean. Nah, Billy Jean was almost a damn solo video. There wasn't too many other people in it. Was he gonna be the tiger or the dude chasing him? I think he said he's want to be fucking Michael in the real world, but oh, it's just, well. you know, it's, so it's just like, what video from way back when or whatever would you be like, that? that's me? And remember, too, because I'm very old school, yeah. a lot a lot of the bands that I grew up with, didn't have didn't do music videos. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to look for anything terribly recent, but hell, you could put me in uh, Snoop and Dre's video, nothing but a G-Thang. I'll just be at the party with all them uh, scantily clad women. <laughs> uh, that was funny. I think for me, uh, I was like, put it funny for the same reason. Put me a Tupac I get around video at the pool saying they was kicking it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I ain't got to just put me in the video. Let me, let me get my kick it on. All right, so here's another one that they asked. is right from down your alley. You know, since you're, you know, writer, director, all that good shit wrapped into one. What's one show that if you could, you would reboot? First thing that came to mind, I would reboot the Cosby show. Really? Yes. And here's why. I don't know if you remember hearing about it. it. It was a rumor at first, but then it started to become true because it got picked up. Uh, Will Smith's old show, The Fresh Prince of, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Mm -hmm. They were going to remake it, and it's going to be a grittier, they have. more it's, hard. Uh, it's, it's called Bel-Air. It's going to be on Peacock. Yeah. I would do something similar with The Cosby Show. 
because all of them were, it was a good show. So I take nothing away from that, but they were a little bit too clean cut, too nice guy image. I would make them a little more urban, shall we say. And I would make the problems and the situations that they face a lot deeper. You still going to bring a message every week. You still going to have a little more fun with it, but I would just bring it a little bit more into modern day reality, the things that we see and face every day. For me, I got two shows. I'm going to go current and way back when. Current, I bring the Carmichael show back. I don't like how it abruptly ended because NBC wanted to shortchange how many episodes. Uh, they didn't, it should still be on right now. So I would bring that back because that was a well written, good, funny black show. Um, back when I was younger, this may surprise you. I would take it back to the essence of when it was funny and not so dark. The company got like over, I think it got like over serious, and that's when it ended up getting it canceled. But I would bring rock back. Man, Rock was a good show. Remember really in the beginning, was. it was it was good. It had its deep moments, but it was lighthearted. Toward the end, it just got like too serious to where I think it turned people off. So I yeah. bring it back and pull it back a few steps to where it wouldn't be such a a gut wrenching show to where you just it go off and you shedding tears or something, you know? Because it's just in your face what's going on in the world. I still keep it to where it's, you know, educated, funny, and deal with things. But I wouldn't, because remember toward the end, it was just, it was so hard. It was like, this ain't no comedy no more. Yeah. It, you know, this is, you know, it, it just got too serious. Now, I know we mentioned a lot of comedies. I got one more. And this was also on Fox around that same time. And I don't know if you remember. It was a police detective show called Fast Lane with uh, Bill Bellamy. I love that show with Bill Bellamy. Yes. That show was that I love that show. By the way, I do have it on DVD, the complete series, which only lasted two seasons, but hey. Um it should have got renewed and kept going. Bill Bellamy actually did a good job on that show. Yeah, um it, it turned out, I believe, that uh it was due to money that it didn't get renewed because of the cost of production. I will, by the way, shameless self-promotion, I will be doing a rewind related review on that on the other YouTube channel on that show coming up real soon because that that was a good-ass show. Yeah. I would bring it back. I hate that it uh, it got canceled the way it did. But just so many shows have been canceled that shouldn't have been. Yeah. Those are just two off the top of my head. Um, I'm trying to think if I can think of another one. There's like two or three others. I can't think of the name of them. I got them in my head. I can see the people. Just can't think of the name that should have never got canceled. But, you know, unfortunately, ratings, 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 shit happens. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can't think of it. Fuck it. Um, yeah. It was something I was going to ask you. I can't think of what it was. But fuck it. Oh, why do you think of that? I, I got one more thing here. Uh, Go ahead. I just want to remind you and everybody that's listening, remember, Next week is our, our our last show, for obvious reasons. After next week, we are going on winter break, so we won't be there the week after Christmas, and we won't be there the week after New Year's. We'll be back uh, January sixth or whatever it is on the calendar, however it works out. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's the eighth, I believe, if that's the Thursday after that. So, you and I will get together and we'll we'll figure that's out what date is. But, but one. in other words. We're, we're gone for two weeks, people. We're gone, but we'll be back. Um, I haven't really thought of the topic, but I'm going to go over it with you off air for like 15 to 30 minutes tops next week. I'm going to put us on Facebook Live and uh, we'll open it up to discussion with other people and see who chimes in on it or not. Uh, you and I will nail it down well beforehand. That way, you know, we can let people know. Um, and the reason why I don't want to do a full show on Facebook Live yet, I, I want to see uh, what the public reaction is to this here. Okay. 
And because I'm petty and childish. Yeah, I forget out what you can give me when you lose that bet. Oh, Lord. And yeah. don't say Hennessy Black. Nah, you know, Tony, you're getting that for Tony. I ain't going to make you buy the same thing twice. Not that I really give a shit, but, you know. Uh, you know, I do what I can. No, what you can get me. Uh, if I was if I was really petty, I'd open up both y'all bottles and drink some of it before I send it out. But I'm not gonna do it like that. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Uh, I'll give you, I'm gonna give you two options. Whichever one's the cheaper of the two, knock yourself out. Either Buffalo Trace or. Yeah, either Buffalo Trace, Buffalo Trace, I'm sorry, Buffalo Trace, or you can get, where is it at? Hold on, where is it at? Where is it at? Jefferson's Ocean. All right, now I heard of Jefferson's. What is this Buffalo Trace? It's another bourbon. Oh, okay. You know, because I this past weekend, you know, I, um, I came out of retirement. My brother was in town. My brother Leroy and smoked a cig with him. You know, I ain't did a cigar in probably about a, probably about a year almost. Is that the, uh, I think I saw the Facebook post. What? I can swear somebody posted uh, with you, him, and somebody else. Yeah, my, my cut, my, my cut, like my little sister. Yeah. And, okay, you know, that's who it was. Feel old because you know Brandy turned forty Thursday, and I'll be what forty four next year. Leroy will be forty five. We just like damn, our younger sister, our youngest sibling is forty. God damn, puppies, puppies. Yeah, you say that, but you know, regardless, though, we got uh before we get off, right? I got to go on a two second rant. Just because you sell cigars. You are not a cigar spy. I got a call Saturday. Hey, we going to the Jew at seven. All right, cool. I made runs and shit because you know I work late during the week. So when I get off from the part time, that's not got to make my runs. Yeah, did all that shit. But I didn't get home till seven, so the juke wasn't happy. Then I get a call. Hey, we going to smoke cigars? Where should we go? I said Outlaw North, Outlaw South, either one. They didn't want to do it because they closed at 11. They said, well, come down. We're going to the cigar bar. The cigar bar is like three seconds away from the T-Mobile Center. I called him. I said, all right, hey, parking shitty. I just found a spot. Oh, we're already here. Okay, well, I didn't say nothing. Yeah. We're in the alley smoking a cigar. What the fuck you mean you in the alley smoking a cigar? Some Missouri ordinance we can't smoke in the building. Bullshit. Um, so I go in there because I got to go through there to get to the back door to go to the, the alley where they at. Right. They had a wrong part about the size of your bathroom, maybe a little bit big. I say you put your bathroom in your closet combined. They had a room that big with cigars in it. Mm. After that, it was a bar, a DJ with karaoke and tables and shit. People in there getting drinks in front and acting like they want to dance, but there's no room. You know, them old buildings downtown, how they just long ways or whatever. Yeah. Not much space. I ain't the littlest person in the world. So I got to, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse, excuse me. So I went from the crib to downtown to be in the alleyway with them smoking a cigar. Wow. When they were like, oh, we didn't want to go to, uh, we didn't want to go to Outlaws because it closed at 11. Is why I hate black people. Guess what time we left from the cigar bar? Probably before 11. <laughs> because we outside in Muslim and cold in the alleyway smoking cigars. Then my brother, because you know, you know when I do shit, I don't play, right? Right. When I got into golf, I got all the shit I needed, right? Yeah. Since I've been smoking cigars, you know, I got all the shit I needed. So if you done we smoking cigars, I got my little to-go case, got my torch. Granted, I left my torch in the car. But I had my case, my cutter, 
five cigars in that bitch. I come outside, my brother was like, you got all these cigars? I was like, I smoke cigars, yeah. Why don't you tell me, man? What's been buying this dinner? Thirty dollars on the cigar. Yo, fuck. Y'all could have came to the house. We could have been on the deck smoking a cigar, or we come in the outlaws. I got a humidor with cigars in it. Could have brought cigars. Y'all chose to go to this place and said cigar box. I think is what it's called, and it wasn't a fucking cigar place. Just because they sold cigars in there, they consider themselves a cigar bar. Mm. Dumbest shit ever. I mean, technically, Walmart sells cigars, too. So, yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah. <sighs> all right, people. That's all the time we have for today. Um, you've listened into our crazy lives. I promise you guys I will get with Kevin and we'll, we'll come up with a very, very juicy subject. Probably controversial knowing us uh, for next week. Kev, as always, I appreciate you, man. Same to you, my boy, my guy, my big bro. Appreciate you. And I know we ran a little bit too long on the NFL segment, but I needed the therapy. I needed the therapy. Yeah. Shit happens. Ain't really nothing to happen to really talk about, you know. Unless you want to talk about shockingly people that just turned gay overnight. You know, that ain't shit else that we really were talking about. <sighs> yeah, that yeah, that that's not shocking. That who didn't see that? The man in the mirror, that's all I got. What I want to know is, ever since you mentioned that, and I'm, I'm going to close it out, I had a flashback to love and basketball. And I'm like, Why? Is, is she the only straight one? <laughs> You're stupid. No, but here, here's my question on, on this, and then like, so we'll close it out. So, you kind of, if you paid attention, you kind of thought, but you wasn't sure. Now that you know, the question is now, was the ex-husband used or was it legit? Think about it. So we need to be on <laughs> for him. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I got nothing. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. On, on YouTube, like, share, subscribe, stay positive, stay blessed. Kevin, end it. Oh, man. You know, and you can say it this week. You can say it this week because of that beat down. No, not and I can't say it unless we beat the Chargers. We got to keep the ball rolling. What I will say is never go into another man's house and say, fuck his couch. It didn't work for Rick. didn't work for the Raiders. Keep your feet to your damn self. I'll let you boy. We out of here. Good night.